Hi, Alison. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. What about you? <laughs> um, I'm okay. Still staying inside. So nothing really, nothing really new, I guess. Everything's the same. Everything's boring and staying inside. What about you? Yes, I am at home as always we have to be right now <laughs> and actually before calling you i was on a live uh, with terry cruz do you know oh, him terry cruz yeah yeah no, she he didn't invite me but i was you know, watching him on a live yeah. and i asked <laughs> asked him to be on on the live but oh. he uh, accepted uh, another person from oh. from brazil as well and I was, oh, oh nice. that's great yeah there are so many brazilians who like uh, celebrities from the united states yeah. <laughs> wow. and yesterday i i was uh, on a justin bieber's live as well really and another yes and another brazilian was accepted oh. <laughs> on his live so many and the person said hi justin and you and he was like you are from Brazil, right? And she, yes. How do you know that? Because you called me Justin. It's not Justin. It's Justin. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> oh, that's cool that he notices those things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So because when he was younger, uh, he came to Brazil and he was interviewed by a celeb a Brazilian celebrity yeah. but he didn't know how to speak English mm. and he said and she said Justin ah. and all the time in that interview he told her it's not Justin it's just <laughs> I think yeah. that's why yeah. he remembered that <laughs> yeah probably that makes yes. and Alison I saw you online yesterday I was happy mm. so that's great have you been working more? Um, yeah, I've been like, I worked a couple more shifts. Um, it's still early in the week, so I'm hoping it picks up a little bit more. Sometimes people will like do it the day of, they'll make a lesson the day of or the night before. But so far, so good. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. You're welcome. What do you usually do when you meet a new person, Alison? Do you... Uh, do you show uh, a specific lesson? Do you have conversation? What do you usually do with a new student here? Um, so it depends. It depends. So usually people want to like get to know each other first. So I'll do like, hi, my name's Ali. I'm from the United States. You know how it was. Kind of similar to ours. Uh -huh. And then okay. and then I ask like, oh, are you here for more conversation practice or actual lessons? And then if they say lessons, I... It depends. Sometimes students want to study for a specific test, so I go to certain websites for that. If it's not the test, then I just use, like, Cambly's, like, lesson planning, which is kind of fun. Ah, oh, that's great. Is it where a student to, to ask a grammar, grammar lesson? Yeah, really rare, really rare. Yeah, because Cambly is more supposed to, mm. to have conversations, right? Yeah, I think exactly. people usually have grammar at school, right? yeah. at an English course, and they want to practice speaking mm -hmm. skills, right? <laughs> yeah, usually the people that ask for grammar lessons are like kids, and it's like after school, um, especially right now with schools being out, they're like English teachers and talking to them or around them, so I think that might be why I'm getting more grammar lessons right now. Yes, and I was thinking about that, Alison. I think it's weird in your case not having uh, children classes in China because people are supposed to stay at home, so online classes should be more... Uh, mm. should be, you, you should have more classes. Right? right, right, exactly. That's what my thought was too, and we asked our, our bosses this, but the children can be together sometimes... Um, and they also have a separate portion of of the lesson where they're taught 
um, certain grammars in Chinese about English. So they have a Chinese person teaching the grammar and then they have me teaching the same grammar, but in English to hear it. So it's a two part system. And when one part fails, then the other one has to stop as well. Mm, get it. Uh, because you usually teach a, a whole class, so you don't hear, you don't teach uh, one one child, one child, for example. Yeah, I teach like four or five. It's still a small class, but mm, I see. That's mm -hmm. great. You know, I I think I can't handle uh, kids. You know, you well, have to to have this. I think. There's this ability to, mm -hmm. to handle them because, yeah, you have to yeah. be more energetic, right? And yeah. because children, they, what's the word? Sometimes when you think about something else, for example, when you're doing something and you think about something else. Oh, they something, get distracted. Yeah, they get distracted, exactly. Or they have short, this is my favorite one, they have short <laughs> attention spans. Shared attention spans. Yeah. Did did it say? Yeah. yeah, there we go. Let me see here. They have short attention spans. Yes, exactly. Children mm. are like that. And do you have problem with that? Um, yeah, usually. Um, so because like they're not in front of me in real time or physically in front of me, I can't always see if they're like looking at their phone or playing with something or watching TV off in the distance. Mm, I see. That's good. Alison, I have a question for you related to grammar. For example, about the past perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think we talked about that Did we? before, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. For example, if I tell you, what, what do you think when I tell you the, these two sentences? The mm -hmm. first one is... It was raining and I got wet and I got wet. It was raining and I got wet. And it had been raining and I got wet. Okay. What do you think of the difference between both? So it had been raining is yeah. not like it's a complete sentence, it's one sentence, but it is like connected to another thought. So it had been raining that day. It had been raining when I got wet. It had been raining yesterday. This this kind of thing. When we say it was raining, it's just in the past. It has less to do with like events occurring and more to do with just saying it was raining. Mm, so you, uh, it does. For, for example, you think about those sentences separately. For example, it was raining and I got wet. Mm -hmm. If I tell you it had been raining and I got wet, so it had been raining, kind of connects to yeah the fact that I I was yeah wet. So if I say first. yeah yeah, it connects it more. I would say so. If I said like it was raining, so I got wet. The the so connects it. And that's the only thing that really connects it. But if you say, like, it was raining, I got wet, um, it sounds a little choppy, and they could be different things. But you're going to assume mm. they're, like, it's it's far, it takes more to assume. It's farther apart. Does mm, it make it sense? had been raining is more natural. Mm -hmm. it? it had been raining, I got wet. Yeah. So, so I got wet. The best perfect I usually use to to put a timeline for example it had been sunny and i went outside to see the great weather mm -hmm. so yeah. it had been sunny connected yeah with the sentence, right? ah okay that's good yeah. that's good it doesn't it doesn't connect the sentences it connects the thoughts of the sentences the you're saying does it make sense i know that's a tricky very obscure kind of explanation yeah no because I I know almost uh, perfect the way we use past perfect when, for example, if I had gone to the bank, I would have money in my wallet, for example, you, using mm -hmm. if, so it's easier. Or, for example, uh, I, I had gone outside when you arrived here, for example. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so yeah. I had gone outside when we arrived. So I, I first uh, had gone outside and then the person arrived. Yeah. So in this sentence, I, I know correctly, but when we use it had been raining and it had been, you know, using kind of the verb to be, it mm -hmm. had been. Yeah. I was confused between it was and it had been. <laughs> yeah. It almost sounds like a start of a story when you say it had been raining. Because you're expecting mm. more. Does that make sense? For example, once upon a time, it had yeah. been raining in a dark, dark forest. Yeah. <laughs> it had been kind raining. Of imitating. Yeah. Uh, kind of similar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I had never heard a story like that. Usually it's like no, a I'm noun. just ma making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making this up. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah that's, good, that's, good. that's good. And what about the future perfect? Future perfect. Let's see. So, here. what are you? What are you already know about this tense? Is for example, I will have gone to the movies mm -hmm. when you. When you are here? When you were here, when you get so by the now. have gone to the movies. Okay. I you have gone to the movies when you get here. So the timeline go future and I don't know if I have do, what what sounds more natural, Alison. I will have gone to the movies when you get here so i have do i have to use the pre the present the simple present in yeah. the second thing? yep the simple present is usually good um another thing to know is that usually when we're using the future perfect in like oh like casual sense it's not very often i use it um yeah I, I rarely hear that yeah. thing. <laughs> Usually it'll say, I will have, or someone will have, blah, 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 by the time mm. I, by the time, blah, blah, blah. Mm, by the time, uh, by the time, okay. Will have, by we'll, the we'll time. Have, this is, yeah. We'll have. We have gone outside by the time you arrive there, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. By the time yeah. it connects better. Mm -hmm. By the time is great. It's, it's great to use it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I, I'm trying to think of another way we use this, but I think, because I can't think of anything I really say like future changes what will the world be like yeah, in 100 even, years yeah I think future perfect we have here in our native language portuguese but we rarely use it i i i assume it's the same in english i don't know yeah <laughs> because I, I i watch so many tv shows and i think best perfect is more used than future perfect right it has it's much more more used i i really do think it's only i'm trying to think of another sentence i could say without by the time i will have been gone oh that's a different tense because of ben uh i will no you can you can use it yeah i can train my but my, my, yeah i i'm thinking of like letters like you write to somebody when you're like running away I will have, or I will be. Long. Let me see. I will have been sick by the time it gets uh, colder. I will have been sick by the been... time winter comes. By the time it's winter hard because you can't know that. Yeah, that can. <laughs> I will. I will be. I I will have been stressed out when it I don't know. I will have become uh, stressed. One. Uh, yes, I think that's that's why when we live in a country, 
it's great because everyday life we will have uh, an occasion to use this the sentence yeah because we are living oh, okay i have to say it and yeah that's great but, but it's only thinking uh, about the sentence right here it's hard yeah <laughs> it's very hard i will become stressed once i pay once i start to pay taxes that maybe that one is better it's just it's just the more you get into future the more you have to add to it to make it sound more fluent it's it's so yeah. tricky once i start paying taxes. i will have become stressed once i pay taxes once, once i start paying uh, taxes and uh, once okay yeah. in, in the past perfect by the time oh, that's great that's it yeah. they are great pieces of advice yeah but oh, Elson, but Elson, thank you no i gotta go no it's okay have a great night sleep well stay you healthy too, so i scheduled another class with you tomorrow so see you then, <laughs> bye, see you then. bye. bye.